Miss Fulton, how long does it take you to upload? Oh, sorry. What? Ask a question, Hugga. How long does it take you to upload? However long it takes YouTube to process it. Once I put it up, it usually takes about an hour and a half. Okay. Yeah, that's why they get a little back. It just it's processing in the background. If you really want to see real quick. We have one processing right now. Let's see if it'll give us an update. Look, it's so slow the box won't even fill up. Great. Okay. So back we're recording all of this, yes. Yes. Okay. So we want to be able to write this as an equation of a circle. And then we're going to use the y, we can find the y coordinate of the center of the circle. So the first thing we need to remember is the equation of a circle is x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals the radius squared. So if we get it in this format, whatever number is here is the x-coordinate of the center of the circle. Whatever number is here is the y-coordinate of the center of the circle. And whatever number is here is the square root of the radius. So if this equals 25, the square root of 25 is 5. If this equals 81, square root of 81 is 9. If this is a negative number, you have done something wrong. Because you can't have that, right? You can't take the square root of negative 81. We haven't learned how to do that yet. Wait. Yes? Square root, why is the, why is the power of 2? It's this, what, okay, the radius squared, so whatever number here. So once you have that number to get the radius, you have to take the square root of it. Okay? It may make a little more sense once we turn this into a real equation with numbers. So the first thing I need to do is I need to move my terms around so that I have the x terms kind of with each other. I'm going to leave a little space here. And then I'm going to put the y terms next to each other. OK? So now, I need to find a number that I can add to x squared minus 4x to make this a perfect square. Okay? The way I do that is complete the square. I take half of the b term and square it. What is half of negative 4? Negative 2. And negative 2 squared is four. positive 4. I'm going to put this in a different color here. Now, for my Algebra 2 students who might be watching this, when we do this, you guys don't have a number in front of the x squared here. Correct? Correct? It's just x. And it always has been. It's just x squared. If we had a number there in front of it, there's something else we'd have to do. I'm not going through that with you guys. My Algebra 2 students want some clarification. They can email me or kick me or whatever. Okay? So same thing over here. Notice that this y term has no lead, this y squared has no leading coefficient. Half of 2 is 1. one. And 1 squared is 1. one. Okay? Now I'm adding 4 here. And I'm adding 1 here, correct? Yes. So I'm adding how much? 5. 5. I have to add 5 over here. Okay? Now I can put this in the right format. What that means is this part here, I can write as x minus 2 times x minus 2, which is x minus 2 squared. Meaning, I could have written this in two sets of parentheses. Right? And I foil that. x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x, and negative 2x make my negative 4x, correct? And negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. 
since that's the same thing in both sets of parentheses, I can write one set of parentheses and square it. That's why it's called completing the square. We are making this into something that we can take a binomial, oh, I dropped my shoe, times the exact same binomial and get this trinomial. Okay. I think the term completing the square is a little confusing because I always think completing the square makes me think of a square, like the shape, not a square like to the second power. Yes? I didn't how you got x minus 2 times x minus 2. How would you foil this? How would you factor this back out? I don't know how to You don't know how to factor, sweetie? Okay, so I need numbers that add or subtract to get negative 4 and multiply to get positive 4. Now remember? Yes? Negative 4x is what they gave me the problem. Well, okay, what's half of negative 4? And what's negative 2 squared? Yes! To complete the square, I take half of the B term, and I square it. If you haven't noticed, that half of the B term is what's going to end up in my parentheses here. Look here, what was half of the B term? One. This is going to end up being Y plus 1. Oh, always like that. yeah, always like that. Yeah. Well, you, okay, the reason you needed to add it here is because you need to know what you're adding to add to the other side, okay? Okay? Now, for this problem, all they are doing is asking us to find the y coordinate. The default in the formula is y minus k. So the fact that this says y plus 1 means it's actually negative 1. Okay? You can have a y coordinate or an x coordinate that is negative. You cannot have this over here end up being negative. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Do you have a question? Okay. Now, this b plus 5 since you guys were asking before about what this radius means, that means the radius of this circle is the square root of b plus 5. In this problem, it really doesn't matter what b is, does it? Okay? We did have another problem that said we want the radius of this circle to be 7. If I want the circle of this radius to be 7, then b plus 5 has to equal what? Has to equal 49. Because when I get this, I would take the square root of it. If I want the radius to be 5, what does b have to be? 20. 20. OK, does that help a little bit? Aiden, does that help you? OK, then I'm going to stop the recording. I'm going to see why my stuff is not uploaded.